Hello guys, good day. Welcome to my channel. So today we're going to learn about work, power, and energy. So it is very important to our life. Like we are working, we need energy, and uh, we might study how powerful are we. Okay, we use these terms or concept in our daily lives. Electricity, there's light here. It uses up electrical energy. Okay. Our electric fan can do work because it has electrical energy. And this electrical energy came from different sources. It came from hydroelectric sources. So it means coming from mechanical or kinetic energy. We can also get energy from the sun, the sunlight. There's light energy. We can also get it from, if you live in European countries, a lot of countries in Europe has nuclear energy, the energy of the, of the radioactive material. Okay, so first, let's define what work is. Okay, so in physics, we define work as force times distance. Okay, so let's say you are pushing a car, and so basically you apply a force. So let's say this is the force that you apply to the car, and of course, Let's say you're strong enough and the car moves. So let's say it covers some distance. After some time, it's already in, in this location. Okay, so you move it, something like this, at some distance x. Okay, so this is the di distance covered when you apply a force, when you push the car. So you apply a force. So from the definition of work, force times distance, we have work equals force times distance our f here is the force and x is the distance okay so let us uh, insert uh, box that formula so this is your first first formula for work and uh, the units for work force distance so the units are we have newton times distance meter okay or other unit which is the si unit for work is actually joule capital j now in other countries they also use other units such as erg energy related to energy so, so but, but the SA unit is Joule, okay? So, there are other definitions of work. What if you apply a force at some angle with respect to the distance that you're covering? So, as you can see in this situation, you're applying a force in this direction. So, let's say that is the force. You're pulling it a little bit upward with some angle. So, this is your angle. But take note that the distance that you are covering is along the horizontal so you are moving in the horizontal direction so this is your x so there's another definition for work and that is work is equal to force times distance times the cosine of the angle between them cosine theta so that is another definition of work force times distance times some angle theta okay so what if uh, there are different situations what if you let's say i have a dumbbell here it's quite heavy and i lift it up okay of course the force that i apply is upward it's too heavy guys up the force is up and the distance covered is upward so applying the definition of work force distance cosine theta the force here is related to, of course you have to to add that the, you have to multiply it with the cosine theta so again let me draw the force is upward the distance that i covered is also upward so basically the angle between them is zero right so that's the angle bit it's the angle between the two the force and the distance so the angle is zero so as you can see here cosine of zero 
is one. So the word should be positive. Okay? Positive word. How about if I lower down the dumbbell? So I apply force. If I lower it down, the force that I apply is still upward. It sent me still upward. But the distance covered is going down. So in a way, you can say I'm letting it going down. I'm letting it go down. But I'm still supporting it. The force is still upward. I'm letting it down, but the force is still upward. If not, then it will fall, right? So the force is still upward. So I have here, the force is still upward, but the distance is downward. So take note, the angle between the force and the distance now is 180 degrees. And you know that cosine of 180 degrees is negative. Say negative one. So the work here in this situation is negative work. Okay? So what if in the next, I just hold it. I'm not covering some distance. Am I doing work? Is there work if you don't if you don't cover some distance? You just apply force. Right? So look at the definition. Force times distance times cosine theta. So here I'm just holding it, hold, F is upward, and the distance is, I just hold it, no distance covered, okay? So here, if you don't have distance, your work is zero. So you're not actually doing work. In physics, if you don't cover some distance, you're not doing work. You just applied a force, okay? So for example, let's say I am holding it upward and I move here along the horizontal I am moving along the horizontal so the force is upward the move the move the movement is along the horizontal so this is the force this is the change of position or my distance cover which is weird so the angle between them is 90 degrees so you know that cosine of 90 is equal to zero, right? So in this situation, no work. Work is also zero, no work, because cosine of 90 is zero, okay? So now, let's define energy. Energy is the capacity to do work. So can you, can you work without energy? Like if you're hungry, for example, you cannot push or pull something that or, or harder for you because you're lacking energy. So perhaps energy is related to work. From the definition, it is the capacity to do work. But first, what are the different types of energy? There are a lot, but let's say, let's just discuss the three basic types or the two basic types, basically kinetic energy and potential energy. So we define kinetic energy as energy due to motion. So the formula for that is one half mv squared, energy due to motion. So let's say you have a ball. If the ball is at rest, then there's no kinetic energy. There's no velocity. There's no motion. So it should be moving, something like that. And it should be moving should have velocity for it to have kinetic energy. So again, kinetic energy is energy due to motion. How about the other type of energy? The other type of basic energy is called potential energy, PE, specifically gravitational potential energy. If, if you raise a ball, I have a ball here. I raise it to some position it gains potential energy. There is potential. If I release it, that potential will be released to other forms of energy. It will become kinetic energy. So there will be a conversion from potential to kinetic. Okay? But let's talk to, about potential. Potential is energy due to, mo uh, due to position. So I raise it. It has some height. It depends on the mass. And of course, the acceleration due to gravity. So the formula for gravitational potential energy is mgh. So let's say this is the ground. 
and then you lift the ball upward so it gains some it doesn't look like a ball something, something like that you lift it at some height so it's now gaining a height there is potential energy and so here potential energy mainly depends on the height the position if you increase the height you increase the potential energy and of course that ball has a mass and so here we have the definition for potential energy mgh mgh now there's other type of of uh, potential energy energy due to position let's say you you pull this string spring i mean oops is that let's say you pull a string a spring i mean okay let's say you have a mass here okay back it again yeah let's say you have a mass and then you move it at some distance so let's say this is your distance let's call it x okay because of that position you stretch it it gains potential energy energy due to position the formula for elastic potential energy we'll just call it pel e e l for elastic is equal to one half the constant which depends on the property of your spring the elasticity constant times x squared the position and then you raise it to two okay so these are your basic types of energy okay kinetic gravitational potential energy and elastic potential energy kinetic energy is energy due to motion potential energy energy due to position okay so now how is energy related to work can you do work without energy? So let's try to answer these uh, questions. Let's start with how is energy related to work? So perhaps there's an equation that will relate energy to work. Okay, let's start from the definition of, of work, which is, so now let's, we're going to relate work and energy. Let's start from the definition of work, and that is work is, e oops, work, is equal to force times distance okay mm -hmm. and we know that force is mass times acceleration if you recall um let's have a note here recall that force is equal to mass times acceleration perhaps you can substitute that m i don't know m a m a mass times acceleration times times x okay hmm. hmm do you perhaps you can hmm. can we find an expression in kinematics equation that has ax acceleration time x recall recall your kinematic equations equations so perhaps you can use one equation then there there is an equation of v squared equals uh, v naught squared plus 2 a x look at this mm -hmm. perhaps you can look for uh, an equation that has a x so what you can do is you can transfer uh, this to the other side of the equation it becomes negative so v squared minus v naught squared equals 2ax or we can divide it by 2 already so ax becomes over 2 okay so perhaps you can substitute that equation so perhaps you can have here m times ax ax now is v squared minus v naught squared over 2 or you can distribute the m it becomes hmm, m v squared over 2 minus m v squared initial v naught squared over 2. Or you can factor out 1 half. 1 half m v squared final minus 1 half m v naught squared. 
Look at this. Is this familiar? Mm -hmm. Look at energy. Chada. Kinetic energy. So it means that work is actually related to energy. Kinetic energy final because you have here velocity final, velocity initial, so that should be kinetic energy final minus kinetic energy initial. So therefore, work is equal to the change delta, change of kinetic energy. So if you apply work to a system or to, to an object, you're actually changing the kinetic energy of that object, or let's say a ball. If you apply work to the ball, I'm actually changing the kinetic energy of the ball. I push it, I change the kinetic energy of the ball. So energy and work are related. Okay? But that's just kinetic energy. How about for other forms of energy? Right? So perhaps we will find another expression, this time with relation, in relation to work and in relation to potential energy. So let's go back to the definition of work. Work is equal to uh, force times distance, but this time, this time, your distance is like horizontal, ah, uh, vertical, along the y-axis. Okay. So let's say you have a ball, something like that. The ball goes down. It goes down something like that. So this is your initial height. It it is falling down. This is your final height. So basically h final minus h initial is your delta height or let's just call it h as the height the difference of, of the height from initial to final and of course uh, that ball has a weight has a weight which is actually mg that's the weight mg so we're not using work as force times distance or in this case height okay Force here. What is your force here? Your force is actually the weight. So that is the weight. So they're equal. Okay? And that is mg. Then your height is... Um, take note here that the h not h original, is actually higher. So it's usually a higher value, higher altitude. So H naught minus HF, okay? So you will have negative something here. Oh, okay, so M, I'll just distribute the MG. MG H naught minus MG HF. Is this something familiar? Look at that. MGH, OMG. <laughs> MGH, that's gravitational potential energy. So work is actually related to potential energy as well. So you have here, now work is equal to potential energy initial, because this is your initial high, minus potential energy uh, final, this is your final high, or you can get rid of the negative. Work is also equal to negative of PE final minus PE initial. Or we can also say that work is therefore work is equal to the negative of change of potential energy. Okay? Okay? So negative delta so it, why is there a negative because it is the work the work done by gravity decreases the potential energy work oops what is going on work done by gravity 
T decreases the potential energy. Okay? So now work is related to kinetic energy and also work is related to potential energy. So let's uh, define the validity of these equations. So these equations are only valid if we are dealing with conservative forces. Other types of forces, we cannot use this formula. Well, we can use if there are correction factors, if we apply non-conservative work corrections, but for, for general physics, we usually deal with simple uh, equations and we have assumptions. And that is, one of it is, we're only dealing with conservative forces. So what is a conservative force? So example is gravity. So conservative force, here I have some notes here. A force is conservative if the work done by that force is independent of the path. So for example, the, the force done by gravity, that's conservative force. It only depends uh, on the initial and final. It doesn't depend on the path. So here, no friction, no friction, no tension, oops, no tension, and, and of course, no air resistance. If you have air resistance, then it, it, in a way, the potential energy is not valid. The work and potential energy equation is not valid, okay? So we have to neglect this. So uh, friction, tension, and air resistance. Another type of, uh, another definition of conservative force is a force is conservative if the work done along a closed path will start and end at the same position. So what does it mean? So con consider, um, consider a roller coaster. So it goes at a, a high, higher altitude. And then sometimes it goes like that. It goes up. So if you have a roller coaster here, so this is your roller coaster, something like that, you're sitting, you know, and then you have a final height here. If you're going, you should come back to the original position or original height. Okay. So along a closed path, you should, you, you should start and end at the same position. So you will go back to the original position. Those are the definition of conservative force. So here we neglect friction, we neglect air resistance, and other types of other types of non-conservative forces. So there's no friction here. We neglect that. So we assume that it's just freely falling down or something like that. Okay, but in reality it's not the case. Right? To simplify the problems, we, we can neglect something. So we're dealing with conservative forces here. Okay? So now let's discuss important uh, concepts in physics. That is the conservation of energy. Okay? There's also what we call conservation of mechanical energy if you're dealing with kinetic energy and friction. So let's start with the conservation of mechanical energy. But what is mechanical energy? Mechanical energy, let's just call it uh, Me for mechanical energy. It's actually defined as potential plus kinetic energy. So it's potential plus kinetic energy. It's just a summation of potential and kinetic energy. So it's MGH plus one half, um, one half uh, mv squared for kinetic energy. Okay. Hmm. Now, what's the equation for the conservation of mechanical energy? Recall, remember, or recall the definition for work. Okay, we have definition for work. Um, delta ke and work is also equal to negative delta pe mm -hmm. according to the conservation of mechanical energy
it should be constant. The total mechanical energy should be constant. It should not change. So for example here, so for example, you're sliding on this slide. Woo! So you have a potential energy, which is quite high here. You have a height here. At the highest point, highest position, your potential energy is at maximum. While if you're freely falling down the slides, the initial velocity is zero. So the kinetic energy there is zero. But as you fall down, your height decreases, so potential energy decreases. But as you go down, the velocity increases. So your kinetic energy increases. But the, according to mechanical energy, it should be constant. It should not change. Mechanical energy here, potential plus kinetic, it should be constant. The total should be the same. The total of potential and kinetic. Okay? So what's our equation for that? Perhaps uh, we can equate the two um, definition for work. Delta Ke equals negative delta Pe. That's a definition for work. So when you talk about delta, it is a change. So we have here delta Ke. Ke final minus Ke initial equals negative Pe final minus it becomes positive now so negative negative plus pe original or initial so if we're going to manipulate the equation combine those that are positive and those that are negative so let's move this here and move this here okay so we have ke final plus pe Final equals PE initial plus KE initial. Final, final, initial, initial. So this is your total mechanical energy or total energy or, or mechanical energy final should be equal to mechanical energy initial. Okay. So this is your conservation of mechanical energy. Let me uh, decrease the size of this diagram. It means that, uh, so we have here mechanical energy final minus mechanical energy initial equal to zero. So delta mechanical energy is equal to zero. The change of mechanical energy is the same. It means constant. Okay, sometimes um, sometimes we use a symbol E for mechanical energy. Sometimes we use E. Okay, other books use that, but yeah, it's mechanical energy or sometimes a total energy. Okay, so you can have, you can also use this equation for the mechanical energy. Okay. Okay, so it depends on the reference or the book sometimes. Okay, so this is the conservation of mechanical energy. As you can see here, even if the potential energy in decreases and the kinetic energy increases, the total is the same. The mechanical energy is the same. Okay, so here there are assumptions that we neglect air resistance, we neglect uh, friction, something like that. But in reality, of course, in, in real life, there is always a resistance or there's always friction, right? So, but it doesn't mean that energy is not conserved. Energy is still conserved, okay? There's a general statement of the conservation of energy. This one now includes all forms of energy, not only potential and kinetic, not only mechanical energy. So 
the general statement of conservation of energy is energy can neither be created nor destroyed. Energy can neither, oops, okay, be created nor destroyed. Oops, oh good, not, not enough space. Okay, this, this is the general uh, statement for the conservation of energy. So you cannot create or destroy energy, but you can convert it from one form to another form. So let's say, for example, uh, I did my morning walk today. So I eat some food to have energy. So you can call this as your internal energy energy from the food or chemical energy but i did not use it all for kinetic potential not not only for motion but of course it is used up into different forms of energy right so it is used up to maintain the body temperature it is used up as a thermal energy heat for the body our body temperature is 36 degrees celsius so it has to maintain that temperature, so it's heating up the body, okay, from the food, right? I move, I move, right? I walk, I run, I walk. So I use it as a kinetic energy as well. And for my organs to function, ATP, adenosine triphosphate is an energy. I uh, use it to produce some. <laughs> So there's what we call sound energy, vibrating my vocal folds. So actually the energy from the food that I eat is not only used to, as a, to move my body as, as motion, there are other forms of energy. Okay, so here nothing is lost. Nothing is lost nor created. It came from something from the food that I ate, but converted to another form. Or forms of energy. Okay? So energy can neither be created nor destroyed. Okay? So now, I think this is the last concept power let's discuss power so power is defined as the rate of doing work again this is related power is related to work and related to energy as well so these quantities are related to each other so power is defined as the rate of doing work so rate what comes into your mind when you hear the word rate? It has to do with time. See, it's the rate of doing work. Work per unit of time. Okay? It's the rate of doing work. But we have a definition for work, right? We have delta Ka, delta Pe. So we can also have power is equal to delta Ke over de delta T or time. Okay, but uh, if you recall, um, if you recall, work is equal to force times distance. So power can also have another formula. Work times so work here fx over time look at this what is that it's actually average velocity x over t 
you can call it that way. So power can also be expressed as force times average velocity. Okay, so we have uh, three formulas formulae for power. Power is work over time, kinetic delta K over T, or power is also force times average times average velocity. Now, what are the units of uh, oops? What are the units of power? What is the unit of power? It's not a question. It's a statement. It's what? What? Okay, what is the unit of power? W. Take note, the W here is unit what? Not, not word. So you might get confused with the symbols. Or joule, uh, this is the unit for power. Or joule per second because it's uh, energy per unit of time. Or work per unit of time. Others have sometimes use kilowatt. Thousands of a watt. Okay. Or sometimes HP, horsepower. During the medieval times, their main transportation to do work is, or they, they use horses, right? So that's why they use HP. So remember that uh, 1 HP is equivalent to 746 watts. These are just a conversion. But yeah, there are also other units. Okay? If you have a question, you can type it in the chat, the, the box um, comment section. So these are the, the definition of power. Before we end this session on work, power, and energy, let's, I'd, I would like to ask you guys this question. <laughs> Who is more powerful? Is it... Uh, Batman, Spider-Man, Hulk, Wonder Woman, Darna. In the Philippines, we have a superhero, Darna. Superman, Flash, uh, Lenny, <laughs> Lenny Rubred. <laughs> so this is a political, yeah, in politics. There's power in politics, right? <laughs> so just for fun, you can answer this uh, in the comment section. Who is... For me, the most powerful is Spider-Man, for me, because they say knowledge is power. <laughs> so Spider-Man is intelligent, right? Or perhaps who is the most intelligent? Uh, who is the other one? Iron Man is intelligent. Is he more powerful because he's knowledgeable? Because I believe knowledge is power. So, but I think Spider-Man. I, my favorite uh, Spider-Man movies are the the ones with Tobey Maguire. Yeah, the 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 first three uh, Spider-Man movies. Uh, I know that Spider-Man is intelligent in that movie because he's a university student. His father is a biophysicist. Hmm? Physicist. I'm a medical physicist. I'm a physics teacher, and he's studying something like nuclear technology, something like they're talking about electron volts, and then it comes to my mind that mm, this is physics, so Spider-Man must be studying physics. So physicists, in a way, most of the physicists, well, all of the physicists, I think, are intelligent, are nerd. I am nerd. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I guess, so you can answer this question. But uh, perhaps answer it also with the definition of work. Who can do more work in a very short period of time because we define power as the rate of doing work. Okay, you can answer also in political. <laughs> anyway, so thank you guys. Uh, see you in the next video. So, bye-bye. Uh, Tschüss.